As the Amber Heard vs. Johnny Depp trial continues, millions of people around the world are still on the edge of their seats waiting to see what comes next. With the whirlwind of drama, memes, and speculation surrounding this trial, it has just become more and more popular, becoming one of the most talked about topics at home, around water coolers, and online. One of the more shocking recent moments from the trial was when Amber Heard took the stand and mentioned Kate Moss, giving Depp's team the opportunity to call Moss to the stand as a witness. So who is Kate Moss? She is a British supermodel who dated Johnny Depp from 1994 to 1997. Amber mentioned her in her testimony when talking about a situation between Johnny and her sister, alleging that Depp had pushed Kate Moss down the stairs while on a vacation in Jamaica. This was also when she admitted in testimony to having become physical with Depp for the first time, saying it was in an attempt to defend her sister. She did this to further try and paint Depp as the villain of the story, but this decision would prove to be a mistake as Kate Moss took the stand as a witness. Kate connected to the trial by video, being in Gloucestershire, England. As Johnny Depp's lawyer prepared to ask her questions, viewers around the world held their breath, waiting to see what new information this might reveal, and whether or not there was any truth to the story of the stairs. Kate Moss appeared well-dressed and professional in a white shirt and dark blazer, sitting up straight, clearly taking her role as witness very seriously. Depp's lawyer wasted no time in getting right to the point first having Moss confirm her past romantic relationship with Depp. He then moves right into the trip to Jamaica, asking Kate for her explanation of just what had happened there. Knowing exactly which situation they were referring to, Kate got straight to the point. She explains how they were exiting their room. Apparently it had just been a rainstorm, so when Moss stepped outside the door to their room, she slipped on the wet ground, falling down the stairs. She states that she hurt her back and had let out a scream because she had been so shocked and confused about the fall which had happened so fast. She goes on to say that Depp immediately came running back to help her, even picking her up and carrying her to her room and going to get her medical attention. This explanation of events clearly paints Johnny in a very positive light as an attentive boyfriend and not someone who would ever purposefully push anyone down a set of stairs. When Depp's lawyer asked Kate if Johnny had pushed her, she replied with a simple and confident no, leaving no room for speculation or questioning. He then asks if Depp had ever pushed her down any set of stairs in different locations or situations. She says, no, he never pushed me, kicked me, or threw me down any stairs. There seems to be no way to question the truth of that. She even seems to laugh at the end of her statement, perhaps being amused at the very suggestion that Johnny would ever do anything like that. And with that, the questioning ended after just three minutes, Amber's side not choosing to cross-examine her, maybe realizing just how much they had backed themselves into a corner in just a few minutes. As if she didn't, Moss likely never would have been on the stand to tell the truth about what happened between her and Johnny Depp. These quick statements may be enough to convince many viewers and potentially even the jury of the reality of Johnny's character, not as the villain of this story, but instead the victim. Kate Moss's confident and straightforward answers seem to paint a clear picture that she's quite certain of. It feels as though there is no way to question that what she said was true, based on her candid delivery and calm collected responses. So what does this mean for the trial? Well, it is a clear step in the right direction for Depp's team, as a previous romantic partner stating that Johnny had never been abusive and had apparently been very attentive and caring is very strong evidence towards Johnny's side. It also throws more speculation towards Amber's testimonies and opinions, as she attempted to use a false scenario to justify her fear towards Johnny and try to make others view him negatively. Public opinion seems to lean strongly towards Johnny, as many attentive watchers have accused Amber of lying and manipulation, both in her relationship with Depp and throughout the trial. It seems as though Amber realizes how deep the hole is that she's digging for herself. Throughout her testimony and the entirety of the trial, she continues to try harder and harder to win the sympathy of both the jury and the audience. She often turns her head to look directly at the jury when answering questions, even wearing hairstyles that obscure the side of her face not directed towards them. She knows that the jury are the people she has to convince, so most viewers say she seems to be desperately trying to put on a show, whether it be fake tears, rehearsed body language, or unnecessary and rambling answers. 
Her actions only go further to convince people on social media that she is continuing to lie and manipulate those around her. Even more bizarre moments of Amber's have been pointed out throughout the duration of the trial, like backtracking and changing her answers, copying Deb's clothes, and seeming to quickly change emotions when she thinks the cameras aren't watching her anymore. All of this evidence seems to be stacking up to point accusing fingers at her and her actions, and the Kate Moss testimony seems to have been the icing on the cake. Though happening very recently, people have already swarmed to social media to discuss Kate Moss's statements and make angry comments about Amber Heard. People have tweeted calling her a liar, saying it's impossible anyone could still continue to believe Amber after this, and much more. Heard's lawyers have been hard pressed to find a way to push the favor towards their side, but are struggling to do so in light of the facts and evidence that have been presented. As it stands, it seems that things are only going to continue to sway in the direction of Depp being the true victim of this relationship. But we can only wait and see as things develop, as you never know what might come to light next. Number 10, The Appeal. Elaine Bredhoft told NBC's Savannah Guthrie that she will absolutely be appealing the verdict reached in the defamation trial. Quote, we even had to try to get the UK judgment in to dismiss this case because he already has his shot. She also goes on to speak about the evidence that supposedly did not come in. It turns out she was serious as within a month of the verdict in Johnny Depp and Amber Heard's defamation lawsuit, Heard's legal team has officially begun the appeal process. In a lengthy filing in Virginia, court on Friday, the actress's legal team is seeking to throw out the June verdict in the high-profile defamation lawsuit by arguing that the ruling had a number of issues, including poor legal reasoning, an improperly vetted jury, and excessively awarded damages. Bredhoft also insisted that Heard's medical records were suppressed and that a number of things were allowed in court that should not have been allowed in, which caused the jury to be confused. But even if the appeal is unsuccessful, it's clear that Heard believes the trial was totally rigged. Number 9. Insufficient Evidence Heard's attorneys have brought forth a 43-page memorandum which asks for the verdict in Johnny Depp's libel case to be tossed on the grounds of insufficient evidence, and with it a more than $10 million award. The main reason? Well, Heard's team argued that it was false for Depp to claim that he lost his role in Pirates of the Caribbean film series all because of her op-ed she wrote in the Washington Post, citing the fact that Depp didn't provide evidence that the op-ed was the reason he lost the role in the Pirates to the Caribbean franchise. The lengthy document claims that there were articles noting he wouldn't be in the sixth film more than two months before Heard's essay was published, and that because Depp was never officially contracted to do a sixth film, he cannot claim damages for a film he was never contracted to do, insisting that the film was already in development without him on board before Heard's essay was even published. Number 8. Juror 15 Heard also claims that one of the jurors who served during the trial was not properly vetted, saying that there were problems with their credibility. The filing points to Juror 15 as proof, arguing that there appears to be a 25-year discrepancy between their birthday on court records and other identity documents. They urged the court to investigate whether Juror 15 properly served on the jury because their listed birth year was 1945. And according to her attorneys, the juror was clearly born later than 1945. In fact, publicly available information demonstrates that he appears to have been born in 1970. The motion goes on to say, quote, this discrepancy raises the question of whether or not Juror 15 actually received a summons for jury duty and was properly vetted by the court to serve on the jury, basically claiming that the jury selection was rigged because of the massive age discrepancy. Heard's legal team are hoping this alleged discrepancy can raise questions over the suitability of the jury panel as a whole. The filing also alleges that Juror 15 may be an entirely different person than who they say they are, which would completely compromise the due process of the trial. Trial. Number 7. Her Defense Team Another reason why Heard is still facing legal trouble for the incident in Australia is because of her lawyer at the time. The actress's attorney in 2015 was Jeremy Kirk, and he told the court that his client never meant to lie on her incoming passenger card. Kirk said that the actress was simply jet-lagged and just assumed her assistants had sorted out all the paperwork. Quote, she has made a tired, terrible mistake. For that reason, 
thing fell on deaf ears as prosecutor Peter Callahan said ignorance and fatigue were no excuse and that the laws apply to everyone. Kirk reportedly cited video evidence that the actress made in a gesture of contribution over her alleged breaches of Australia's 108 year old quarantine laws, claiming that his client made no attempt to hide the dogs at Brisbane airport and she did not understand the meaning and significance of declaring no to customs questions about having animals. Number 6. Lack of motive This one is really interesting. Another reason Herd's team is filing the appeal is because they claim she actually believes her own allegations. That's right, her team is arguing that what actually matters here is whether or not Herd believes that she's a real victim of domestic violence. They are saying that if she believes her own allegations, a jury can't find that she acted with malice and that she would have written the op-ed without any bad intentions. The court documents insist that Depp's legal team never actually proved she didn't believe her own claims. In the appeal, the text says, quote, the jury's verdict was obviously influenced by Mr. Depp's pleas in the face of the court's preclusion of Mrs. Hurd's introduction of evidence that Mr. Depp had, in fact, already been tried in the court of his choice for committing 12 acts of domestic violence. So basically her team is trying to write off the verdict by saying that Hurd did not have malicious intent by writing the op-ed. 5. The Senate meeting A TikTok video was posted this week of a Senate meeting of the Rural and Regional Affairs and Transport Legislation Committee, which took place on October 21st back in 2020. The clip showed Senator Tony Sheldon of the Australian Labor Party being asked about the timeline of the perjury investigation against Heard. Quote, there was evidence presented in the London court case which suggested false statements were provided in the court case in Australia in 2016. So we are investigating that. In the TikTok video, which was viewed more than 400,000 times, the politician said that as he understands it, the former estate manager of Johnny Depp, Kevin Murphy, said in a witness statement that he told Heard by mail, telephone and in person that she could not take the dogs to Australia because the relevant paperwork and permits were not complete. As the clip came to a close, Lane then confirmed that this directly contradicted Heard's statement at the time of the trial, as she said it was a misunderstanding as she had assumed her husband's assistance had arranged the terrier's passage into the country. Number 4. Discrediting witnesses Following her lawyer, Elaine Bredhoft, Heard in fact claimed that the actor paid the witnesses brought by him for their testimonies. In a shocking clip released by NBC, Savannah Guthrie asked the actress about the various reasons that the jury might have had for not believing her. 36 year old Texas native said, quote, they had sat in those seats and heard over three weeks of non-stop, relentless testimony from paid employees. And towards the end of the trial, randos, as I say. That's right, she literally called the witnesses for Johnny Depp randoms, and many people believe she was even talking about British model Kate Moss. She later also stated that the jurors did not believe her claims, as the three and a half weeks of testimonies by Johnny Depp's attorneys was an attempt to portray her as a non-credible person. In fact, the Aquaman actress added that she thought the testimonies from Depp's witnesses conditioned the jury not to believe one word that came out of her mouth. Number 3. Perjury In a statement given to ET, a spokesperson from the Australian Department of Agriculture, Water and Environment said that they are quote, investigating allegations of perjury by Ms. Heard during court proceedings for the 2015 illegal importation of her two dogs into Australia. They added that the investigations are ongoing over allegations that Heard lied under oath. This is incredibly serious as perjury carries a maximum jail term of 14 years, while illegal importation can result in a seven year stretch under of the Queensland Penal Code. In fact, the TikTok video of the Australian Senate actually showed confirmation of an investigation taking place. In the clip, Peter Lane, then listed as First Assistant Secretary of the Compliance Division, said that giving false testimony is an offence under the Crimes Act. So that is what they are now investigating. Number two, new text evidence. Heard also took issue with texts that weren't allowed into the trial. She actually claimed that the text messages she sent to friends and family during her relationship with Deb are evidence of the domestic violence that she suffered during their marriage. In one message, Heard claims she sent her father in 2014. She wrote that Depp kicked her in front of everyone during a private flight. In fact, that very incident was a subject of testimony in the couple's defamation trial as well. And another in 2015 read, quote, Johnny did a number on me tonight. I'm safe and I'm with my support tonight, but I need some real help. Can I come tomorrow? I called earlier because I thought I had a concussion and I didn't know if I should have called police. By exposing the text messages during her NBC interview, it's clear that she believes this new line of evidence is going to somehow muddy the waters of the case, even though she knows that it wasn't actually allowed in the trial. And number one, discrediting audio tapes. The audio recording
recordings played during Depp's testimony show her admitting to starting a physical fight between them and downplaying his reaction to the incident. When speaking on NBC with Savannah Guthrie, Heard claimed that the audio tapes were edited. Quote, what you would hear in those clips are not evidence of what was happening. But when Guthrie said that Heard admitted to starting fights on recorded audio, she said, quote, I know how much has been made of these audio tapes. They were first leaked online after being edited. What you would hear in those clips are not evidence of what was happening. Claiming that the 20 second clips are not representative of the two or three hour conversations they came from. But when Guthrie asked her why she hadn't submitted the full recordings, she just said, I'm not a lawyer. Well, now she is really trying to discredit those tapes and insinuate that the trial was rigged. In at number 10, lied about donating. This one just proves what a liar she really is. In the couple's original divorce settlement from 2017, she won seven million dollars from Johnny. But she decided to put the money to good use and pledged to donate all of the money to the American Civil Liberties Union and the Children's Hospital of LA. However, in March of 2021, it was exposed that she never actually donated any of the money. But honestly, who's really surprised at this point? Sources close to Depp told Page Six, quote, the judge thought she was this wonderful human being standing up for mankind because of her supposed generosity, but she was lying at her about the donations. The judge reacted to this news by saying the donation claim was a calculated and manipulative lie. However, Amber's lawyers claimed that she didn't lie and had given the money, just not all of it. I'm not sure why Amber would need over three years to give that money away if she was really planning to. Number 10, charity pledges. The infamous charity pledges. From her initial divorce settlement, Amber Heard was given $7 million. She pledged in court to give the money entirely towards charity, with a few million to a children's hospital in Los Angeles and the rest to a labor rights group. But now that a few years have passed and we're looking more closely at the receipts from this claim, we find out that Amber has donated barely anything to the charity. The labor union testified that they never received the full $3.5 million that it was promised and that about half of the donations that it received in Heard's name came from Elon Musk, who dated Amber after her and Johnny broke up. Amber deflected by stating on the stand that she still planned to donate all the money she promised, but that the defamation suit, which demands up to $50 million in damages, got in the way. Quote, I still fully intend on honoring all of my pledges. I would love him to stop suing me so I can. Interestingly, there are about four years between Amber and Johnny divorcing and the Sun libel trial, of which she was not being sued for. In at number nine, stolen story. One of the biggest bombshell allegations against Amber in the course of her divorce has been the accusation that she stole her assault story from her assistant. And she played the story off as her own so she could exploit it for financial gain in the divorce. Heard's former personal assistant testified to the UK High Court that her assault story was used by Amber in Amber's depositions against death. The assistant named Kate James testified that she told Amber the story in confidence of a horrible incident that happened to her in Brazil that traumatized her. Kate James said on the record, quote, Amber referred directly to a violent incident that occurred to me 26 years ago, and she twisted it into her own story and she used it for her own use. Adding, this of course caused me extreme distress and outrage that she would dare to attempt to use the most harrowing experience in my life as her own narrative. And at number eight, leaked phone call. Probably the biggest bombshell over the course of the divorce were these leaked phone calls between Johnny and Amber. In these phone calls, Amber admitted to hitting Johnny's death. In the call, Heard said, quote, I'm sorry that I didn't hit you across the face in a proper slap, but I was hitting you. I was not punching you. Babe, you're not punched. Adding, quote, I don't know what the motion of my actual hand was, but you're fine. I did not hurt you. I did not punch you. I was hitting you. Depp replied, quote, I left last night. Honestly, I swear to you because I just couldn't take the idea of more physicality, more physical harm on each other. Heard finished off saying that she couldn't promise that she wouldn't get physical again. Adding, quote, God, I effing get so mad I lose it. So in this call, Amber not only admits to harming Johnny Depp, but she also tried to victim blame him and tell him that she didn't even hit him that hard. Just very manipulative words. In at number seven, ex's support. Back when Amber first made her claims against Johnny, a few of his ex-partners came forward defending Johnny and denying accusations that he got physical with them. Two of the women were Winona Ryder and Vanessa Paradis. Ryder wrote, quote, the idea that he's an incredibly violent person is the farthest thing from the Johnny I knew and loved. I cannot wrap my head around these accusations, with her saying that she never knew him to be violent to anyone. She finished off adding, quote, I don't want to call anyone a liar, but from my experience of Johnny, it's impossible to believe that such horrific allegations are true. 
I find it extremely upsetting knowing him as I do. Parody backed up these sentiments and she wrote that Kurt's accusations are quote, nothing like the true Johnny I've known. And from my personal experience of many years, I can say he was never violent or harmful to me. And of course people can change for the worse. However, Amber is the only person who harmed past partners, not Johnny. And at number six, pooped in bed. And this is why we call her Amber Turd. This one is straight up disgusting. But the couple's housekeeper exposed that Amber Heard pooped in their bed while Heard was with Johnny Depp. Housekeeper Hilda Vargas said in a written statement that she found the feces and knew they were human. Vargas added that after she told this to Johnny, Amber Heard approached her and told her the poop photos had destroyed her marriage. The housekeeper said she apologized to Amber, adding, quote, I was very nervous and so I apologized, even though I didn't believe that their marital problems were my fault or that I had done anything wrong. The housekeeper finished off saying, quote, she's a bad temper in my opinion, and I didn't want her to yell at me. So even the housekeeper knew what a bad temper that Amber had during that relationship. Halfway at number five, investigated for perjury. So this one's actually very recent. And on May 7th of 2021, it was reported that Amber is now being investigated by the LAPD for perjury. This is related to an alleged fight that took place in 2016, where Amber claimed that Johnny trashed their apartment in a fit of rage. New body camera footage from LAPD officers that arrived at their apartment that night shows that the apartment was not trashed at all. Depp's lawyer said in a statement on the matter, quote, Amber Heard and her friend Rocky Pennington staged the May 2nd crime scene to prove the allegation against Johnny Depp. Adding, quote, the crime scene was an enormous lie. This is the night that allegedly Johnny threw a phone in Amber's face and left a bruise. Amber also claimed that he threw red wine all over their walls and rug. During depositions, the officers claimed that they saw no evidence of a crime committed that night. And now this body camera footage proves that. Number nine, the makeup palette. Previously in the opening statement back in April, while discussing how she used to cover her bruises from Deb hitting her multiple times, Amber's attorney held up a Milani Cosmetics color correcting makeup palette. She stated that Amber had used this makeup palette to hide her bruises after the onslaught delivery by Johnny to make sure that no one discovered her bruises and lesions. But in a now viral TikTok video, Milani Cosmetics themselves refuted this whole statement, saying that their color correcting palette came out in 2017, a full year after Amber had gotten a restraining order against Johnny. Johnny Depp supporters online used the issue to allege that Amber was lying about actually being hurt by Johnny during their relationship. But now that Amber is back on the stand, she was shown the same Milani Cosmetics palette and asked if she used it. She said she used something similar to it. Quote, this is what I was talking about as a color correction palette, as a color correction kit. This is not obviously the exact one I used to carry but I used to carry something like this with me all the time. Amber told the court that the makeup she did use, she referred to as her bruise kit. She also explained that she would ice her injuries to reduce swelling, apply cream, and then put the makeup on. Quote, the idea is that you wanna counteract whatever color you're working with on the bruise. So first day of bruising, well, the immediate is red. The red is what shows up right away. So you wanna go with the opposite on the color wheel by dabbing a bit of green or something to counteract the red. While the attorney for Amber previously insinuated that the Milani Cosmetics palette was the one that Amber specifically had used, once the makeup brand refuted the claim, it was changed to one like this. Number eight, sharing embarrassing photos of Johnny. During her testimony yesterday, Amber was being cross-examined and asked about whether she sent a photo to a friend of Depp sleeping after allegedly having consumed substances. Johnny's attorney characterized the photo of Depp asleep with ice cream spoon on him as embarrassing and asked whether Amber had sent it to anyone. Amber stated that she didn't think so. But very quickly, the attorney showed a screenshot of a text message that Amber sent to her best friend. The message attached to the picture reads, quote, this is what I'm dealing with. When she was shown the text messages between her and her friend of the photo of Johnny debilitated with the caption, this is what I'm dealing with, Amber's attorney asked, quote, and this is you supporting Mr. Depp? Amber rebutted, stating, quote, this is me getting support from my best friend. I also need support. Number seven, never hitting Johnny Depp. Yeah. At the beginning of the trials, Amber continually pressed the alleged fact that she never hit Johnny. She said that she was solely the victim to his harm and that she never raised a finger against him. We found that not to be true because the instance with the stairs became apparent. 
During one of their fights, Amber ran up the stairs with her sister. Allegedly, Johnny raised his hand to her sister, who got between the couple, and Amber hit Johnny to defend her. So the story changed from Amber has never hit Johnny to Amber has hit Johnny once in defense of her sister, who was clearly in a position of danger. According to Amber, her panic and fear for her sister came from the rumor she heard that Johnny had pushed his ex-girlfriend, Kate Moss, down the stairs during one of the fights back in the 90s. The rumor is absolutely not corroborated and could push the court in the favor of Johnny from Amber. Number six, hit Johnny Depp once. Okay, so the story changed from Amber has never hit Johnny to now Amber has only hit him once in defense of her sister. But that may not be entirely true because Amber was asked about a now viral audio clip recording of her on the phone with Johnny. In the clip, she states, quote, I was hitting you. I was not punching you. Babe, you're not punched. You're fine. I did not hurt you. I did not punch you. I was hitting you. After she was asked about the clip, Amber changed her story once again to now admitting that she had hit him, but that it was in a provocative manner during a moment of intimacy. She said that Depp hit her in bed, and so she hit him back reactively. On the stand, she states, quote, I hit his arms, his body as he was trying to prevent me from closing the door. I knew what he would do to me when he got to the other side. So now the story has gone from never hitting Johnny to only hitting him once to now twice. Number 10, illegal importation. In 2015, Heard and Depp defied Australia's quarantine act that required dogs entering the country from the US to be declared and spend 10 days in quarantine. The then couple landed in hot water after Heard brought their two dogs with her when she visited Depp down under as he filmed the fifth installment of the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. Heard allegedly said no on her immigration form when asked if she needed to declare any animals, which resulted in her getting in trouble with the Australian government for breaching biosecurity laws. The couple was told in May 2015 that they could either get the dogs out of the country or Aussie officials would put down the pups, named Boo and Pistol. When asked why Depp wasn't charged as well, the prosecutor's office said that there had been a lack of admissible evidence against anyone except her. 9. The Australian Environment The country has very strict animal import laws. When you really think about it, it's no surprise that the government came down so hard on Amber Heard. Since Australia is isolated geographically and some of its wildlife are found only on that continent, any disruption to the natural balance, such as the introduction of non-native animals and their associated diseases, could ripple through the ecosystem. Basically, the penalties for offenders are so tough because the country's animals are so vulnerable and due to the isolation of being on a literal island, the native animals are highly susceptible to visiting animals contagions because they've never had the chance to develop resistance. So realistically, Heard bringing the two dogs into the country without an import permit and without first subjecting them to a mandated quarantine was a recipe for disaster. Number eight, video apology. The Hollywood couple had to apologize to the Australian public for their terrier's unauthorized visit down under in a very awkward public act of remorse, a scripted video in which Depp says Australians are just as unique as their wildlife. The video was submitted to the court as Miss Heard escaped conviction for failing to declare the couple's dogs Pistol and Boo when visiting Depp in May. Even Australia's Deputy Prime Minister Barnaby Joyce said that the couple were less than willing participants in the video. The actors described Australia as a wonderful island with a treasure trove of unique plants, animals and people, and warned others to respect its laws. Quote, Australians are just as unique, both warm and direct. When you disrespect Australian law, they will tell you firmly. It is not clear who whose idea that video was, but reports said that Australian prosecutors had vetted the dialogue beforehand. Reaction on social media was swift and brutal, with many comparing the short film to government propaganda. Number 7. Flawed Legal Logic In court documents that were filed for Heard's appeal, Elaine Bredhoft said that the case rests on flawed legal logic, arguing that instead of proving how the op-ed negatively affected Depp's claims, they were based solely on defamation by implication theory, abandoning any claims that Heard's statements were actually false. The attorney also argued that Depp's legal team said it would focus on the period after the op-ed came out, but instead widened to encompass events and statements from way back in 2016. The filing argues that instead of proving Heard hurt his career with her 2018 essay, which is why he sued her for defamation, he was instead trying to disprove the initial 2016 domestic violence allegations, which were not up for judgment. Heard's team also claims that Depp didn't actually prove that he suffered that much financial hardship because of the op-ed. 
In fact, they claimed that it was very unlikely the actor would have appeared in Pirates of the Caribbean 6 after all, because he himself said he wouldn't have taken the role for a million alpacas. 6. Publicity At the time, the then agriculture minister Barnaby Joyce criticised the actress and actor for bringing the animals into Australia without properly adhering to the law. Quote, if we start letting movie stars, even though they've been the sexiest man alive twice, to come into our nation with pets, then why don't we just break the laws for everybody? Joyce, who now serves as Australia's Deputy Prime Minister, infamously said that it's time that Pistol and Boo buggered off back to the United States, so he basically told them to get lost. The comments elevated what might have otherwise been a local spat into a global delight for comedians and broadcasters all across the nation. Surprisingly, a large portion of the Australian public actually agreed with the minister's sentiment, and the couple started receiving widespread criticism down under. The Guardian even ran a dog death countdown ticker, while comedian John Oliver dedicated a more than six minute segment to making fun of the whole ordeal. Australia hadn't really heard much of Amber before the incident, but it's safe to say that it was terrible publicity. Number 5. Excessive Damages As a part of the appeal filed by Amber Heard's legal team, they insist that the damages awarded to her ex-husband are far too high considering the verdict. The lengthy document goes on to read, quote, The jury's compensatory and punitive damage award were excessive as a matter of law, and added that Depp only deserved to receive reputational damages, insinuating that the damages awarded to him were blown way out of proportion. If you don't know, the two parties were found to have defamed each other in June, but the jury ruled largely in Depp's favour, awarding him $15 million in damages, while Heard was only awarded $2 million. The judge later lessened the punitive damages to $350,000, citing limits set by state law. Following the trial, Heard's lawyer said in June that the actor wouldn't be able to pay the monetary penalty awarded to Depp. But Judge Penny told Heard's attorney that if she wanted to appeal the verdict, she would have to put up an $8.35 million bond with an annual 6% interest. Representatives for Heard have said that she does not have the money to pay Depp or meet the bond, so not sure how that's going to happen. Number 4. Falsifying travel documents Accompanied by her now ex-husband, Heard pleaded guilty to falsifying immigration documents in an Australian court in 2015, stating that she had made a mistake due to sleep deprivation. Two months later, the actress was officially charged with two counts of illegally importing animals, and the case was closed after she pleaded guilty in a Queensland court for falsifying quarantine documents. She ticked a box on her passenger arrival card indicating that she had no animals when arriving by private jet in Brisbane on the 21st of April. For faking the documents, she ended up being placed on a good behaviour bond and copying a $1,000 fine. In fact, according to Guardian Australia, providing a false document on entry under the Nations Migration Act carries a maximum penalty of 10 years and a fine of 117,800 Australian dollars, which is really interesting considering that the actress only got a slap on the wrist for the whole incident, which the Australian public collectively felt was quite unfair. Number three, therapist notes. Much has been made of the therapist notes that Heard claims would prove Depp physically attacked her. Quote, there's a binder worth of years of notes dating back to 2011 from the very beginning of my relationship that were taken by my doctor. After those notes were examined, it was revealed that on one page, the therapist wrote that Heard claimed Depp had hit her and threw her on the floor. Another note eight months later said that Depp had ripped her nightgown and threw her on the bed. She told Guthrie that the notes represented years and years of real-time explanations of what was going on. Even Bredhoft claimed that her client's medical records were suppressed, which she says were very significant because they showed a pattern going all the way back to 2012 of Heard reporting the domestic violence to her therapist. But if it was so significant, why wasn't it counted? Well, Judge Penny had ruled the notes as hearsay and refused to allow the evidence into the trial, which does make total sense. Number 2. Depp's Estate Manager Kevin Murphy, the actor's former estate manager who worked for Johnny Depp for over 8 years, concerned Australian officials when he told the London court that Heard had ordered him to lie under oath, to cover up the fact that she flew pets into Queensland on a private jet without even declaring them. In a written statement, Murphy told the High Court that he had repeatedly warned the actress about Australia's strict animal entry rules. But when the smuggling controversy went public, her demanded that he provide a false statement to the Australian court saying that she didn't know anything about the requirements. When Murphy said that he was uncomfortable with lying, Heard allegedly said, quote, Well, I want your help on this. I wouldn't want you to have a problem with your job. He testified that Heard started threatening his job stability unless he cooperated with providing a declaration that supported her false account for the Australian proceedings. Number one, witness statements. Now, this could definitely be the nail in the coffin for Heard when 
it comes to her legal trouble that she's still facing in Australia. Murphy, Depp's former estate manager, admitted during his testimony in London that he actually went along with Heard's demands. Quote, because of this, I felt extreme pressure to cooperate, despite knowing this would involve being untruthful. He later confirmed that he had in fact been contacted by the FBI and had agreed to provide Australian authorities with a witness statement. A representative for the Department of Agriculture, Water and the Environment confirmed this, telling E! News, quote, the department is seeking to obtain witness statements and once obtained, the Commonwealth Director of Public Prosecutions will consider whether the evidence is sufficient to warrant pursuance on the matter. An attorney for Heard criticised the investigation, telling the outlet that the Australian government and the FBI are victimising a person who has already been adjudicated to be the victim of domestic violence. In at number 4, Aquaman 2. Over the course of the divorce and libel trial, Petition signatures have been racking up to demand that Amber Heard get cut from Aquaman 2. Cries for her firing got even louder after Deb was cut from a number of projects following her allegations. As of now, the petition has 1.8 million signatures. In the description of the petition, there are many examples of the lies that Amber has told over the years. And the organizers believe that there should be repercussions for all of Amber's documented lies. The franchise recently revealed that they were keeping Amber on the project, which got tons of backlash. And if Amber really cared about what people thought of her, she'd do the right thing and step down from the project. In at number 3, Johnny's severed finger. This is yet another case of Amber being the violent one, and Depp has claimed that Amber is the reason for his severed finger. He alleged that the incident happened about a month after they were married, when Amber was throwing glass bottles at Johnny. Apparently one of the bottles was broken and sliced his finger right off. This fight was apparently caused because Johnny wanted her to sign a postnuptial agreement. As a result of this injury, Johnny had to receive multiple surgeries to correct the severed finger, and even contracted a serious and painful illness because of it. And at number 2, told assistant to lie. Johnny Depp's former estate manager has testified that he lied under oath because Amber Heard forced him to do so, or he would lose his job. This was after Amber was charged with bringing her dogs to Australia illegally and not abiding by the country's restrictions on animal travel. Kevin Murphy, the estate manager, said that during the trial, quote, Amber wanted me to say essentially that it was my fault in one way or another that the paperwork wasn't completed so that I could take the blame for her. Murphy's statement claimed that Heard said to him, quote, I want your help on this. I wouldn't want you to have a problem with your job. After being pressured into it, Murphy decided to lie under oath to not get in trouble with Amber. Amber was able to escape a conviction for the decision after she publicly apologized for the mistake. And finally, at number one, Amber's parents took Johnny's side. I honestly think this should be all the proof that anyone needs that Amber is lying about almost everything. Leaked text messages between Johnny Depp and Amber Heard's parents show her parents basically siding with him in the divorce and admitting that Amber's motives are totally a lie. In the long string of messages between Johnny and Paige Heard, Johnny expresses his frustration and pain with the divorce. Paige texted back saying that the lawyers are the reason all the nastiness is happening, and apparently Amber only filed a restraining order against him so Amber would not be evicted from their apartment. One text from Paige said, quote, her dumb lawyer possibly said it as the only way she would not have a place to live in 30 days. She didn't want to do this, I swear to you. The lawyers are frigging things up. Depp responded saying that the injury photos of Amber's face were doctored and she was creating lies. Paige then replied, quote, we didn't talk so please never bring this up, but I'll swear to you this was not her idea, nor did she do it willingly or happily. She was told it was her only option to not being kicked out. Paige then finished off the conversation saying, quote, please don't pass this on if you ever talk to Amber again. I love you, son. Depp's attorney later told The Blast that these messages clearly proved that extortion was the true reason for the hoax against Johnny, not actual harm. On the witness stand on Monday, Amber spent the first few minutes changing her story and adjusting her testimony, telling the court that the alleged harm from Johnny began earlier than she previously thought. Quote, I'm embarrassed to say I think I would have liked to believe that the period of time in which I fell in love with Johnny, in which we fell in love and he was sober and he wasn't violent to me, lasted longer than it did. She said following a review of therapy notes, she recalled earlier moments of alleged harm that dated back as early as 2012 rather than her previously stated 2013. When asked by her attorney why she didn't recall these moments, Amber stated, quote, that's not how my memory works. Number four, Amber not being a fan. While up on the stand, Amber spent some time describing her early days in a relationship with Johnny. She also describes what she thought of him before she got to know him. Quote, I knew who he was. I wasn't familiar, you know. I wasn't a fan of his work. 
I wasn't familiar with him. But then some fans found a decades old interview with Amber in which she was asked whether she was a fan of Johnny's growing up. The younger Amber says, quote, I mean, who isn't a fan of Johnny's? That's a given. He's been a cultural icon and talented actor for since I can remember. Number three, Amber leaked evidence to TMZ. Previous testimony from the original 2016 divorce proceedings from Amber are currently under scrutiny as well. Allegedly, she may have slipped up while on the stand originally. During Hurt's cross examination of Virginia's Fairfax County Circuit Court on Tuesday, May 17th, the Aquaman star was shown footage of her 2016 deposition in which she discussed her divorce from Depp. She was heard in the video admitting that TMZ had been alerted about their divorce as well as her filing for a domestic violence restraining order against Depp before awkwardly covering her face with her hands. Also at the original trial, Amber stated, quote, I wanted to tell Johnny, or have him told by Jerry, the Depp's former bodyguard, or someone who knew him or was close to him. Basically, I didn't want him to find out online. I would like him to know information coming from me or coming from Jerry from me, so that he finds out about the divorce filing or my intention to do so from some other source other than TMZ, which had been alerted. Depp's lawyers then accused her of leaking the information to the press well before she officially told Johnny that she wanted a divorce. Amber fumbled through her responses, saying that she wasn't sure and that it wasn't her area of expertise. Number two, Amber's broken nose. And now another time when Amber allegedly got hit by Johnny and a day later appeared on the James Corden show looking absolutely flawless. Johnny Depp's legal team grilled Amber Heard over photos of her looking fresh faced during public appearances after allegedly being beaten up by Depp. The court was shown a clip of Amber Heard appearing on the Late Late Show with James Corden in December 2015 with no visible marks or bruises on her face. She previously told the court in her defamation trial that her makeup team had to work around the wounds and apply quote super heavy red matte lipstick to hide her bloodied lip. While I don't doubt the power of makeup, it's hard to hide visible swelling. Number one, Amber has never hit anyone. While Amber Heard had previously claimed that she never hurt anyone before her relationship with Johnny, which required her to fight back to escape further harm, and in an act of self-defense, Amber's past shows a very different story. All the way back in 2009, she was actually arrested and charged with hitting her girlfriend at the time, Tasia Van Rie. In the end though, charges were dropped, but this isn't where the lie comes in. The couple tried to claim that the only reason Heard was arrested was because the arresting police officer had realized that they were partners, not friends, and that the arrest motive was homophobia and prejudice. It was later found out that the officer who had arrested Heard was in fact part of the LGBTQ community herself was actually an advocate and person who fought for equal rights. The officer spoke out after this entire ordeal, saying that despite these claims against her, she arrested Amber because a violent fight occurred and that she was the one who witnessed it in the first place. So Amber directly lied under oath by claiming she was non-violent despite having a history of hitting her girlfriend in the past.